Hello guys, and we're here today with another very interesting deck profile. We're here today with some Dark Magician, yes, some Dark Magician, and I'm going on a little bit of a Pot of Desire love spree because this is the first time I've actually really been able to play with it now that it's in the TCG. And so yeah, we're running 42 cards in this deck, so let's just go straight in. As far as competitiveness goes, not until we get Dark uh, Internal Souls. I was about to say Dark Souls. No, um, we're getting... <laughs> We're not gonna die 5,000 times. No, once we get Eternal Souls on this deck, we'll probably be very competitive because it's just such a good card. Just being like, all right, I can either search out my Harpy Feather Duster or I can summon a Dark Magician from my hand or graveyard once per turn. So Eternal Souls is just too good. You too good. So anyways, three Dark Magicians, one Demonk because Demonk is just nice. Just being able to banish monsters it attacks and add a spell card during the end phase. Trouble of Mahad is of course really nice because he'll float into your Dark Magicians, he's a level 7, he's a kind of a hand trap so he works well with max C's and everything else. So um, Magician of Dark Illusion is a level 7 that makes himself Dark Magician while he's on the field which is really nice for Eye of Demise and um, Dedication to Light and Darkness. And he can special summon out a Dark Magician from your graveyard if you activate a spell or trap card while he's on the field. But more importantly, you can summon out both Dark Magician and um, Magician Dark Illusion off of Magician Navigation, they're both level 7 so that sets up for a really nice rank 7 play. And then Triple Chocolate Magician Girl who will help you ditch spellcasters from your hand that you really don't need, such as your Demox, such as your Mahad. If you guys have these 3 cards, these 4 cards in your hand and you really don't have a use for them, it's best to use Chocolate Magician Girl for them. Because of course you can always summon these guys back out with Call of the Haunted and then they will float or get the, their effects off. And then uh, Triple Magician Rod, which will search out any card that lists Dark Magician, any spell or trap card that lists Dark Magician in its tag. So that includes Dark Magic Attack. I don't know why, but it won't let me search out Eye of Demise. I just disappear with that. Uh, dedication Through Light and Darkness, Triple Illusion Magician, and then um, Dark Magician Circle, and then Mag Magician's Navigation. Most of the time it will be Dark Magic Circle because you really want this card. It's where you get a lot of your plays from. And then Triple Max C for more consistency to, du to duality, no, to Allure of Darkness because you're running nine darks. And then one Eye of Demise, one Instant Fusion so we can make rank four plays with Chocolate Magician Girl. One Dark Magic Deck because it's how we've had the dust Duster Triple Desire so that way hopefully when we activate one, the other two get banished. If they don't, well that kind of sucks. And then one Soul Charge which will summon out pretty much everything. Yeah, it, summons, it can Soul Charge can summon out anything in this deck. So if you can get your Demox, you can get your Mahads, you can make your Rank 7 plays, make your Big Eyes, whatever. And then double Twin Twister. It's just Twin Twister. Getting rid of back row. Dedication to the Light and Darkness is actually pretty nice. Being able to summon out a Demox from your hand deck or graveyard. So that's honestly very strong because it's a quick play so you can attack and then use this to summon out Demox and attack again. And then uh, double, no, triple Illusion magi ma Magic, which I really like about this card because it says you can add up to two, so you can only add one, and there's just, it's, it's always live, pretty much always live, so you, unless you banish all three of your Dark Magicians off of Desire, so in which case, GG, it's gonna be, it's, it's gonna be live, I mean, if you only have one in your graveyard, it's really nice, I, I don't know why, but I really like how this card is worded, because I, when, it, when I see this card, it's like, oh, it's probably not gonna be live right now, oh, wait, no, it is live. Like if I make a um, red eyes and I have two materials attached to them and I have one in the graveyard, like oh I can't use this card. Oh wait, no I can. Anyways, uh, triple dark magic circle. We activate this. Look at the top three card of your deck. You can reorder them and add one card that lists dark magician or a dark magician among them to your hand. And then you can of course, like I said, reorder them however you want, which works really nice with choker magician girl, allure, and pot of desires and everything else. And of course, if you special summon a Dark Magician, his normal spell summon to your field, except during the damage step, which is really awful for Mahad, you can target one card your opponent controls, banish it. Uh, Magician Navigation, this card is honestly surprisingly good. I don't think I really ran this card in when I played um, Dark Magicians with Spellbooks, but this card is definitely very, very strong because of the fact that it's a one card, well actually it's a two card because you have to summon Dark Magician from your hand, but you can then summon out this guy and make a rank 7, so it's a 2 card rank 7, which is pretty normal, but it's one monster and one trap, so really nice. And of course, what I really like about it is if it's in your graveyard, you can banish this card to target a face-up spell on trap card your opponent controls. And its effects are negated, it's a quick play, it's a quick effect, so 
Your opponent can activate solar shards, they can activate anything, and they can just negate it. And it can, of course, negate cards like Monkey Board and Pendulums. So it definitely makes this much more competitive, having this card that can negate spells. And then Triple Call, so that way we can summon stuff out from a graveyard and whatnot. And so into the extra deck now, when I first started playing this, I put in a whole bunch of rank 6 because I really wanted to try to put in Dark Magician Girl, but I really never got that into the deck. It just never really worked. But if you do want to play Dark Magician Girl, you have access to Beatrice, Photon, and Stellar, Norito, and Beyond. Those are some really good rank 6s you can make. But seeing how we don't have them, Dark Magician in here, and two Dark Magicians at least, we cannot make that. Card. So if anything, this is it's not very the extra deck really isn't that important because there aren't too many good rank sevens. But here's what we have: we have Amulet Dragon, which can banish fellow cards from your graveyard, and it gains attack. Not too strong. This card though is pretty strong. Um, while this card face from field, you can discard one card and negate the activation of spell card. So even more spell negation, which just makes this deck even stronger. If you can make Dark Paladin, very very strong. Modin, and then you can put in pretty much two copies of any of these. Um, there's a couple of other Dark Magician rank 7s, I believe, like Evon High Magician or something like that, that you could put in. But I really, every time I go for rank 7, it's either Big Eye or this guy, or unless I'm trying to just burn my opponent and go for this guy, so I don't ever feel like I need this. I mean, if you have this guy, you can activate Quick play spell cards or trap cards from your hand during your opponent's turn by detaching, which I guess allows you to get through Twin Twister and it's a floater. But if I can make a rank 7, I'm probably going to go for Big Eye so I can take a monster or go for this guy so I can banish stuff and summon out another Dark Magician. So I just never feel like this guy's ever strong. You know, if I, I've been saying for a while that uh, Draco Sack's been Power Crypt. Of course, you can put pick Draco Sack in here, but I mean, you have. This guy that can banish it when a normal spellcaster attacks. But anyways, so this is pretty much the extra deck. I mean, there aren't a lot of rank 7s. You can put in uh, some rank 3s, maybe some more rank 4s if you want. But as far as competitive this goes, not until we get Eternal Souls. Once we get Eternal Souls, this deck will probably be very big. Because by then, we'll probably have the ban list. If we don't... Okay. Now against um, matchups, against Cosmos, it can be annoying because this card targets. That's why I liked playing Fate, because it didn't target. Fate is amazing. Like, honestly, the Spellbook variant is gonna be low-key strong. It's gonna be that one deck that tops, and it's always gonna be included in, oh, a Dark Magician topped, and people are gonna think of this, but when reality, it's gonna be Spellbooks. Like, I, I think Spellbook Dark Magicians is honestly a little bit stronger. Than just pure dark magicians because of the because of fate because of all the banishing all the searching which makes more it makes it more consistent but of course it really needs um eternal soul so spellbook magicians won't really be a thing until we get eternal soul but that is it for this deck profile hopefully you guys enjoyed this deck profile it's dark magicians and there's a lot of new cards that came out in pot auto design what am i talking about um the Dark Illusion, Dark Illusion, I mean, I, there's just so many good stuff in this. And of course, we're even getting Cyber Angels in a couple weeks. So, hope you guys enjoyed this tech profile. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. See you guys later. Bye.